is often darkest before the breaking of the dawn, and we have hope for you today that no matter how dark your night may seem, there is a great dawn that is upon you. I'm Angela Madden, and I'm here with Tom Hollis, and we have a wonderful program for you today. We really do, Angela. Good to be with you. I'm so glad you're You're looking here. very bright and cheery there. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we have Andrew Greer with us, one of our favorites. Andrew is a singer, songwriter. He's been here many times, shared his songs with us and his songwriting with us. And he has a new album called Songs from the Dark. And you're going to hear a little bit about uh, what that means and where those songs come from. We're also going to play one of his music videos of a new song called Take This Cup. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be tremendous. We're going to do some other fun things here today, too. I'm excited because even hearing some of the lyrics from his songs, yes. I think there's a really powerful story that he has to tell, and we're going to glean from that today. We are going to have a lot of fun, and in fact, we're going to start first with a little bit of Stump the Host. <laughs> Okay, so I hope that you play along with us and get some of these right. And if we don't, give us grace, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we have not heard these. We have not no. seen these. We have no idea what's coming up. No clue. So our first question for today is, what was Belshazzar's other name? Uh, oh, Tom. Fred. Uh, <laughs> it was Daniel. That's Daniel, right? Daniel. That's what the king gave him, uh, uh, you know, I think it's Daniel. Let's go Let's with that. Go with Daniel. Yeah! <laughs> okay, yeah, because like, you know, all the Israelites That's that right. served the king, they gave him new names, like the three in the fiery furnace all had different names. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I love that. And that comes from Daniel 1 and 7. Okay, here's the next one. In which book of the Bible does it say, the love of money is the root of all evil? Come on, Angela. This is my weakness, the chapter and verse know, part. The I love know. of money is the root of all evil. Well, it sounds like a proverb, right? It's yeah. wisdom. But I also feel like I recall Jesus referring to this. So you got a, you have a one in four right. chance here. Um, I don't know, uh, Tom. Wait a minute. The love of money is the root. I am really wrestling with this one. I don't Me know. Too. Um I'm leaving it up to my co-host, Angela. She is now okay. going to pick a book of the Bible. <laughs> And, uh, uh, let's go with the book of John. I don't know. <laughs> First oh. Timothy. Hear oh. that, young person? You know, yeah. the root of, and you know, it's interesting because some versions say that the root of uh, the, the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil, not necessarily oh. all evil, but like and it's that. the love of money, not necessarily money itself, That's because exactly we can right. use money properly. Yes. But uh, yeah. And I guess Jesus talked about choosing man. Okay, or God. well, we so anyway. get two out of three here. <laughs> here we go. Our next question. On the way to Capernaum, what did the disciples argue about? They were always arguing. <laughs> they were arguing just like we were right before the show. Which one of us is the greatest? Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's what it was. They were arguing about uh, who, who was the greatest the right. of okay. them. Yes. <laughs> Yes. All right, we'll take two <laughs> out of three. Who would be the greatest? <laughs> that comes from Mark 9, verse 34. Those are fun and they challenging. Fun. They're challenging, and <laughs> we've been embarrassed several times on the show, but uh, not so bad today. Well, I hope you played along with us. Well, our next guest is a talented singer, songwriter. He's a producer, a Dove Awarded uh, nominated artist. Just this year, he released his first solo recording in more than a decade. Andrew Greer's Songs from the Dark reached the number one position on Apple Music's prestigious singer-songwriter top albums chart following its release. Praise the Lord for that. Andrew joins us now to share about his music and how his new al album elevates themes of peace and hope, which are birthed from seasons of pain and doubt. Andrew, welcome back to Hope Today. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hey, Angela. Thanks for having me again. I, I can't believe you, you let me back on. Oh, yeah. And I know you knew the answer to all three of those questions. We should have. Oh, yeah. Well, I had my lifeline ready. I was ready to go. <laughs> you are ready to go. <laughs> all right. So uh, tell us about being a singer-songwriter. What's that uh, like? Uh, and why a solo album? Why, why did you do that at this point? 
Yeah, well, it's been a long time. You know, Tom, uh, I've been on a lot over the past few years because of the different interview series I've done. Of course, yes. Dinner Conversations with yes. Mark Lowry was right. a part of Cornerstone's lineup for so long, and we're grateful for that. But music was always, has always been, will always be home base. And I think, you know, songwriting in particular, uh, I didn't, I was raised, you know, in Texas, and I was raised attending church, and uh, my parents have a very, uh, significant um, individual faith, and they raised my brothers and me to also seek out um, our own spiritual journeys, our own spiritual paths, and and to discover God for ourselves. Though so they certainly shepherded and guided that and exampled that, it was ours to find. And for me, music was my main line of communication. Music was how I uh, found kind of a pipeline uh, to talk to God, not just about God. Actually, music really became my conversations with God. I think that's still true. And I think the older I get now that I'm getting into my 40s and um, life does seem have a, uh, you know, seems to have a way of shifting at least how much I can contain in my mind and in my heart at one point in time, music kind of gives me that outlet. So songwriting gives me that outlet once again, just like I did when I was a kid, you know, and just like when it did when I was a, a teenager and a young adult gives me that outlet to uh, discover my own path, my own journey uh, with God, and just a way to sort out. You know, it's it's a it's a bit like cheap therapy because I don't have to pay for it. Hopefully, I get paid for it occasionally, but um, it does seem to have um, therapeutic qualities in the sense of grounding, centering, um, and calming. At least for me, my spirit. You know, regardless of what. Uh, circumstances I find myself in, anxieties I'm dealing with, whatever I'm worried about, which isn't always necessary, but it's a part of my human nature. And so I have to find a way to exorcise that. And mm -hmm. music music gives me a way to do that and, and definitely gives me a way to do that in a spiritual sense. Well, you know, I want to ask you about the, the theme of the album, but before I do, I'm fascinated by the process of writing a song. What comes okay, first? Okay. You know, seriously, you know, for those of us, most of us who don't write songs, what, what is the process like? Do you write the, the lyrics first? Do they come to you? Does the tune come first? Does it happen all together? You know, that's a great question. It does not always all come to, I, I just, I think there's a lot of different ways to write. Some of my really closest songwriter friends write all by themselves. And so for them, that's in a room with a piano or a guitar and a day with nothing on the schedule um, and a, a notebook, a little moleskin of, of, you know, inspiration and ideas that they've been collecting over the past few weeks or months or whatever. But for, I think a lot of us in Nashville, and this is true for me now, I end up in a lot of writers' rooms, so I'm co-writing. Uh, with other people. And I think it's each of our responsibilities when we come into a, a, a songwriting co-write to bring in ideas, to bring in things, maybe to bring some melodic ideas, maybe to bring in some lyrical ideas or a hook, which is kind of what, you know, the whole song hinges on. And then it's the collaborative process. And, and some days I may bring 80% and some days I may, I may bring 20%. But what I've come to learn, and especially through one of my closest friends, Cindy Morgan, who's a wonderful songwriter. She's really taught me the art of co-writing uh, here in Nashville, but that without the collaboration, the song doesn't become. And so regardless of what percentages it is, it's really a, a collaborative experience. So I like the co-writing experience more than writing on my own now. So Tom, we could totally... Angela, we could totally write a song together. It, it, well, well, let me, let me, I, I, sorry, I just can't let this go yet. I know, so, Angela, does he do this every time? Uh, what, what is, what is the process like when you, you like a certain line and somebody else says, well, that was really terrible. And I, you know, how does that um, all, how does that all fit together? No, that's it, not exactly. Well, it, it definitely our personalities come out in the room, right? Yeah. Because the, those who are passive, um, tend to leave dissatisfied, <laughs> but I'm pretty straightforward. So if I don't think something works, I'm just going to say, I don't, I don't think that works. I think usually most writers come in the room ready for that, uh, dynamic of, well, I'm not sure, you know, and I think we could do better. And I think it creates better songs, more articulate thoughts, um, because we're willing to test each other's first thoughts, you know what I mean? And, and sometimes we even take it home and kind of edit it a little bit and then email each other and go, hey, I think this line should be this and that kind of thing. But yeah. it's, it's an interesting process and it's fun to do together. That's great. That is really great.
Thank you for dive, letting us see behind the curtain there a little bit. But, uh, sure. You know, we could have done that, you know, off camera, but that's fine. <laughs> well, let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk about your, your new albums. It's got kind of an ominous title, but a hopeful title, too, Songs from the Dark. Uh, tell me about it. What's the theme? And what do you hope people really glean from it as they listen? Well, I think, you know, the title, Songs from the Dark, really came, the, the songs dictated that because uh, originally, like, the, the first batch of songs that eventually became that record and really put in me the desire to do another solo record after I'd kind of shelved that uh, for a good while, uh, did go back to the beginning of the pandemic. The church that I was a part of at that point in time here in Tennessee, uh, we were a smaller church. We didn't have all the infrastructure to be able to live stream right away and know what to do, like many, many, many churches around the country. And so they had asked me if I would write a song each week to kind of uh, express and embody our collective experience, you know, what we were all feeling. So it did start in kind of those dark moments where there was a lot of confusion, a lot for a lot of people, a lot of anxiety and fear of the unknown. But then I just began to relate that to my everyday journey, um, which for me, I mean, I, I think I've always, I've always loved sad music uh, ever since I was a kid. And I, I don't think I was a very sad kid. I don't, I wasn't a loner. I had a lot of friends, had a great family, but something about the, the songs uh, in music, especially that, that call out to some of the sad spaces in us, I felt a really deep and connected spot with the spirit there. And then as I became an adult and as I really struggled with my own darkness and my own, you know, just I've, I've had to make up a lot of beds, you know, I never thought I would lie in. And so connecting, how do I find my way out of that? You know, how do I find the light through the dark? And so I think these songs just help connect me back to my own story, my own journey and, and my path forward. But everybody's path forward comes out of the dark. You know, I mean, none of us get to, get to um, avoid uh, the darkness in us and outside of us and um, discovering the light. So hopefully the songs are just kind of a, I call them a feather bed of hope, you know, just a soft place to land uh, when we're in those tent spots. I love that, a feather bed of hope. For you, what has been the key to pulling you out of those dark moments into the light? I don't know that there's any key, Angela, for me. Um, I think each time it can be a little nuanced. I, I will say community uh, can, especially as a single person with no kids, no immediate family in my house. You know what I mean? No, no, the kind of that natural accountability when you got to show up at the dinner table each night or, or, you know, you know, you have the dynamic of hearing about each other's days and experiences or investing my energy into someone else's problems, my kids' problem instead of just my problem. You know, that's a unique thing. So community becomes really, really important because it helps me. Um, one, it, it's a centering thing. It's a grounding thing, but it also takes me out of myself. And I often tell, uh, I think people who are in really dark spots, we have a dynamic, there's an attraction. I have a, um, I don't know, people in sad spot pheromone, I guess, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, one of the things I try to talk about with other people from my own experience is serving others. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a real concerted effort to literally get out of my bed, get out of my house, put on my shoes and go do something for someone else. Now, that's not to avoid the things that I need to address in my own character, in my own life, in my own circumstances. But it is a way to kind of open my heart, my mind back up to gratitude um, for not only the things I have, I would say, but the things I'm able to give, you know, and, and that helps me realize that I'm always, we're, I think we're always most of the time working from an overflow um, that I actually have a lot more resources. And I think that's a spiritual thing within than I may feel in the moment. And the, the last thing I want to say to that, Angela, is one of my friends told me a long time ago, our feelings are real, but they aren't always telling us the truth. And I think that has become real important wow. to me. One, I've admitted I'm a feeler. I didn't always like that. I like being practical and getting things done, but I'm, the fact is I'm a feeler. And so realizing that I can have feelings and they can be an indicator of something important and may need to be dealt with, but they're not always, tell it's not always the full reality. It's not always the full picture. That is, so uh, uh, yeah, such an important answer, I think, that we have feelings. <laughs> we definitely have feelings. Mm -hmm. Let me ask mm -hmm. you about the song that's coming up. 
uh, that we're going to uh, see uh, in the music video that we'll be seeing in just a moment here, uh, Take My Cup. Let me ask you about a, a line in there. First of all, you're playing a very grimy piano. I don't know if that was a real piano or <laughs> where, where that, what was with the piano anyway? Yeah, that was up in Buffalo, New York in a piano warehouse where old pianos go to die, which okay. makes my heart very sad. So I just connected with the sadness. Yeah. You know? There were pigeons in there and it, oh, wow. it, uh, it was an environment. It was not a real piano but, or I was not playing that piano on the recording. Well, let me ask you about this, the line that was in there called uh, help, uh, help My Unbelief, which, of course, is a scriptural reference of the Father when Jesus said, I, uh, do you believe, all things are possible if you believe. And he says, I believe, help my unbelief. And that's always uh, spoken to me as something that maybe I don't have to have an infallible belief here, just a, a little bit of belief. What's it speak to you? Yeah, that little bridge you know, the line before it is, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And I think that's the, um, that's the balance perhaps we're all living in, at least in this context of not, you know, fully understanding who God is, um, not fully being able to touch, see, feel, you know, fully explore, be, be in complete communion with him, right? So we're in this kind of shifting sand of believing, but not also not i mean day to day i mean i encounter things within my own self much less outside of myself that challenge that belief i think that what that looks like for me is many days i trust myself more than i trust him and yet at the end of the day when i go to bed i think i trust you more than i trust myself pit it up with any question and that could be a theological question like is the bible an errant or it could be a question about someone's lifestyle or it could be a question all these things that we talk through and discuss and try to have definitive answers about and i've yet to find a lot of definitive answers except that within me the calling is to trust him more than i trust myself and and also i it's, it gets pretty simple for me and that i just want to be with jesus and so yeah yeah, absolutely. You know, that's... So, so fine. So, my prayer at the end of the day is basically to the God is just don't leave me alone because I'm going to distance myself. I'm going to find my way, you know, some circuitous route uh, to God. So, I just say, don't leave me alone. And I think that's part of help my own belief is you come to me because I know you can, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Andrew Greer, thank you so much. Again, the album is called uh, Songs from the Dark. And, uh, Andrew, uh, it's so good to see you again. <laughs> uh, have to have you up here in person sometime, again, sharing your music with us. To. Awesome to be with you. Right now, we're going to go to Andrew's music video for Take My Cup. Yes. 
Take my cup and lead me home. Maybe you're in that situation where you say, I feel like that broken down piano that Andrew was playing. I feel like I'm out of tune. I feel like I don't play anymore. I feel like things haven't quite come together the way I expected. And as we talked with Andrew about, maybe your belief is, and your trust in the Lord isn't strong right now, but God is able to reach wherever you are. So no matter where you find yourself today, call out to him. You call out to God and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I am out of tune. I am broken. I am uh, needing a belief stronger than I have. And if you do that, he will rush to meet you, as I always think of the father and the prodigal son story, where he rushes to meet his son, God. That is, a, that is a descriptor of God. That is how he is towards you. He will rush to meet you and rush to restore you to the, the place that you were meant to be. And that is a place of being right next to him, of being in the family of God. Cry out to him now for that. And you'll see that, Angela. Amen. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think that all of us have these moments where it can be dark and can be difficult, but God is in the midst of the difficulty. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the song and, the, and the, 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 our, our chat with uh, Andrew Greer, fantastic uh, songwriter. Uh, we wanted to uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about some exciting changes here. Now, I hope you've loved this show for the past four or five years that we've been doing this program. It's been a while. Um, but uh, God is shifting us, and we are going to have a new program called Unscripted Faith, and that begins Monday, September 9th. It will be in all the places where you see hope today now. The new program will be in there. I actually, I don't know if you all know this. I've actually sort of taken a step back here at the station. I work two days a week. I'm still involved in many different ways, but Angela, you and Pastor Jay... Anthony Gilbert will be hosting the show. Tell me yes. what you're, you're excited about. Oh, I'm so excited because I think kind of like these conversations we just had with Andrew is there is so much behind the artist. There's so much behind the author. There's so much behind the pastor. There are all of these things that are happening that we don't get to actually hear about and understand how they're navigating. So as believers, sometimes we can look at those who are doing these great things and get confused and think, oh, it's just mountaintop experiences. And because I'm in the valley, you know, there must be something
something wrong. And I'm excited to talk to people and really get to hear the stories behind what's actually happening. And so that's what Unscripted Faith is all about. Yeah. It's going on a journey with others yeah. and being able to grapple with the light and the darkness that can coexist at times. That's, that's exactly right. Kind of like what we talked about with Andrew. Yes. So we'll, uh, it's, it'll be an exciting new program. I will still be involved doing some special uh, segments. So will several of the hosts that you know from, uh, from our uh, program, Hope Today. And uh, we know that you're going to enjoy it. So be sure to tune in for that. You know, we wanted to have a little bit of fun just at the end of the program here. I've got my deck of cards here and it's a faith, these are faith journey cards. So there's a question. We have no idea what the questions are. So pick a card, any card, <laughs> read it and answer the question. Okay. What is the most confusing part of the Bible to you? That's you. You go um, ahead, take it. Revelation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. How about you, Tom? Uh, you know, that, that is certainly uh, one. Uh, some of the, the uh, wars of the Old Testament is a little bit hard to understand and what, what was going on there. But certainly Revelation and, what, uh, and, and much of the end times yeah. is, is confusing to me. I'm going to take one myself. Okay, I did not plan. I have no <laughs> idea what this is. Let's see. This one says, consider the fruits of the Spirit, which come easily to you, which don't. <laughs> Self-control does not come easily to me. If you've ever set a bunch of snacks in front of me, just ask anybody at the station here, okay? Self-control does not always just flow from me. Uh, but, you know, all of the, the fruits of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, uh, patience, you know, I can be a pretty patient guy, and then I can't be sometimes, you know? <laughs> I was so. going to say patience is one I struggle with, but I would say joy is yeah. something that comes more easily. That's something, maybe the first fruit that the Holy Spirit has given me. <laughs> that, whole, yeah, that whole thing of long suffering, uh, you know, oh, yes. the, the King James cool. word. You know, you don't like, I don't want to long suffer. Where's the short <laughs> suffering? I want That's the short right. suffering fruit of the That's Spirit, right. you know? That's right, yeah. yeah. I don't want to suffer long, nothing yeah. for a long period of time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, God has a great and wonderful things for you. He has plans and purposes for you. Things that uh, I never dreamed of doing this type of ministry. God puts us in the places we need to be, though, and the places he has for us. He says an interesting thing in Revelation chapter 3. He says, I open a door before you that no man can shut. What door is God opening before you today? Because no one can stop you from going through there except you. Just take those steps. God's not going to push you through. Take those steps and he'll walk you through there to the place you need to be.